the Mediterranean. On this naval aircraft carrier, these men have been selected to write a page in military history. They are the best the Navy and Air Force have to offer. They've been brought together to form an elite squad of fighter pilots. Their mission, one of national security and international concern. These are the fearless pilots. Seems no matter what I do, I end up hurting someone. The men who command them. Pudding. No, thank you, sir. I'll do my best. And the women who love them. Charlie Sheen. <laughs> Never wanted to be a horse so much in my life. Lloyd Bridges. <laughs> Call them the best of the best. Call them... Eddie! Hot Shots. The mother of all movies. Oh, God, I love this country. It is what it is right now. Yeah. <laughs> That's for so many things. This audio, I'm trying to get the audio right on this new recording technique. Yeah. I have actually a good program that I know how to ace it. You forgot to take your headphones off again. It doesn't matter. I mean, you can leave them on. I just know aesthetically if that was the I think choice you were going for. I think you're just for. fucking jealous that I got my headphones on. I am on. jealous. I have headphones and you don't. I have like some shitty, some cheap gaming headphones over there. You can put them on if you want. No, I'm okay. But thank you. We're getting in just under the wire. I just think you're real cute with that hat on, but now you also have headphones on, and so... Does it fuck it up? I don't know. It's fine. Put these headphones on. It's not necessary, and I know it's not necessary, which is why I think... I wonder if it would... if Because I feel like I sound now like I'm in a fishbowl, and so I'm going to automatically talk louder. If we had more of a legitimate setup, which the only step I have left is actually getting a mixer. No, I don't want them. Well, I don't either. Well, I don't want them. I don't know how to turn them off. We're on the show. Don't worry about it. Just set them down. We got, we're getting in just under the wire. We started oh, our, yeah. our, our April theme awkward <laughs> laughter like three weeks in yeah. <laughs> to the month. <laughs> like a week ago. And we still haven't gotten to like our movie roulette movie, Boy, which I think we'll do the, this next week. Mm -hmm. The Taika Waititi movie where we then movie roulette our next one. We still need to talk about Four Lions, our randomly generated movie, right. the Christopher Morris movie. And we're approaching, I don't know if Year of Von Trier is going to go down right now. Maybe he'll be a theme, uh, in a monthly theme. And we got, hey man, don't be so dramatic, which I want to like right. watch a Michael Mann movie actually very, very soon. I don't know what Michael Mann movies are. We've had this conversation four times. I forget. Do you want me to name the movies again? Just Until look them up on your I will. on your own time. Just kind of look I, them up and familiarize yourself. I just can't be as excited All right. because I can't think of a single one. Why can't I, you be excited about just watching new movies you've never seen no, before? No, I am. I just and mean learning like, about movies. Yeah. That's what you should be excited about. Okay. The fact that you don't know anything about them. That is exciting. That's the exciting part. Yeah. But like every time I say the name Michael Mann, you're like, I don't know. I just oh, no. because you say think, Michael Mann, and I think of Amy Mann, and I think of Magnolia, but that's P.T. Anderson. That's what my brain does. Other people are allowed to have the name Mann. That's your that's your trail. Totally. But I, I just think we there's or probably I think of Michael Moore, and that's not accurate either. You could have also just let my I can't think of a Michael Mann movie comment go right no, past you. This is like you the have, second or third time we've though. had this conversation. Okay, but I like, think it's so been on I audio. Think about Michael Mann twice. You've told that fucking story about Chandler from Friends not liking Keanu Reeves like six times. Twice. Okay, maybe twice on the podcast and like four other times in our life. <laughs> make you feel what? in our life you <laughs> you're spiking hard okay i won't laugh anymore <laughs> i'm not funny stop laughing at me <laughs> i'm not funny 
What did you call that? They have a shrieking instead of spiking. <laughs> <laughs> you were so excited to talk about loaded weapon. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard that episode back. You were pumped in that episode. You were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it was like, That's like a, not a, the a, faith or sound or body movement that I. Made. I don't have your face, so I can't do your face. So cut me some slack. Your impression of me though was like, yeah, yeah. I would never do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'd be like, and then Emilio Estevez went through the sewer, and you're like, yeah. <laughs> I, when I saw the sewer. <laughs> I knew. <laughs> and I think you're going to be pumped about this one because this is one you've kind of picked. This is my favorite one of these type of movies. This actually is kind of one of and the it, best of its kind, it right? It holds up. It is. It holds down. It holds it down. <laughs> it truly. Every every com negative comment that I had about like the Naked Gun movie. And even maybe some critiques that we might have made about Loaded Weapon, Hot Shots. Hot Shots, directed by Jim Abrahams uh, from the year 1991. It, yeah. Written by Jay Abrahams and Pat Proft, who also co-wrote the Naked Gun movie. Is it Abrahams or Abrams? It says Abrahams. Interesting. Never heard of this person either. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Any name I say, tell me if you've heard of them or heard of them. Cause that's we really need to know that. Do you uh, do you want to be talking to me at all? <laughs> Would you rather just monologue? Charlie Sheen. Have you heard of him? Yeah, this is pre crazy Charlie Sheen. Carrie, as far as we know. As far as we know. <laughs> Carrie Elways. Uh, Valeria Galino. Gorgeous. John Cryer, who I actually thought was very funny he in this movie. He is really funny. Uh, and probably my favorite uh in this movie is Lloyd Bridges, who plays the lieutenant. Oh my god. So good. The, 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 we were discussing this because Lloyd Bridges is like, he's a guy that's been in tons of serious movies, and then he's in this insane movie, and he's crushing it. He crushed but that's, it so hard. That's also the story of Leslie Nielsen's career. But like the back half is, of his career are these zany-ass movies. But prior to that, he was an actor in serious roles. It is the same, but comparing the two men to each other... They have the same, like, history, but exactly what you said is the difference. Leslie Nielsen not only did zany movies, he behaved zanily in those movies. He's a zany actor in a zany movie. And when he was interviewed, Lloyd he would Bridges, bring fart machines and stuff. Sometimes you just get, get a wrong piece of salmon. Is that you? Well, I don't see anybody else in here who's going to be doing it. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> But you can show it. I don't care. I just don't care anymore. These things don't bother me. All right. Well, then let's... We'll start now, then we'll begin. Did you hear the starter pistol? <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd Bridges is still a serious actor in a zany movie. Like, he's obviously playing everything correctly, but he plays it so straight. Yeah. Again, this His is not a movie that's great, having, though. like, whoa, His delivery kind of eyeballs. Great. His delivery is perfect because every moment you believe that he is thinking the thing the crazy ass things that this man is saying yeah he's he's a lieutenant he's got uh, like from he's having world war ii korean war flashbacks he has like plates in his head and his leg is not real and every part of his body like he just gets hit he, constantly and it's like dinging he, he claims to have been shot in the ear and it went straight through he pulls a like he's got <laughs> napkins through his ears <laughs> You know, he and he's so like bumbling, but he's also like kind of uh, way past his prime, and kind of uh, like, uh, almost like just like a an old man who doesn't realize he's sundowning. I yeah. honestly couldn't. Have, I honest in my mind, it was very easy to imagine like a Joe Biden playing this kind of character. Oh my god! Yeah. I think he Joe Biden would actually do a good job if he was playing the lieutenant in Hot Shots. Lloyd Bridges would be a great Joe Biden. <laughs> yeah, Back then. I Man, I'd take a How Lloyd Bridges. Lloyd Bridges? Is he dead? I think he's dead. I think he might be dead too. I but I didn't want dead. him to be. I just don't want him to be. Sure. Hold on. Let me. Um, let's see when. Oh, this is Movie Humpers. I'm Bob Jim. Oh, I'm Angela. We watched Hot Shots. And the sounds you hear are dogs and, and house beeps. He died in 1998. Whoa, so this was like... Seven years after Hot Shots. Was this maybe one of his last films? Pot was you in want me part to look that up? 
You want me to you look don't have it? to. Was he in part D? I don't remember, but I do want to watch part D. He was in part D. Cool. The, the loose premise of this movie is that it's a Top Gun-esque it's Top Gun spoof. spoof. And there is... With a dash of dances with wolves. Yes, definite dash of dances with wolves. There is a mission that the pilots are supposed to go on, but someone wants it to fail because they want the military jets to be put out of commission so that their like private jet can take over we never see the private jet but apparently it's the bomb yeah the villain are like um weapon and uh war vehicle manufacturers yeah they're the villain in the movie yeah and, and not so like just a full-on incorporated handshake yeah. deal they're like the yeah we don't want your uh old classic top gun jets we want some new stuff. Yeah, so it's like, we're going to try to make this fail so the military realizes that they can't use these old jets they've been using. They need our new fantastic jets and will buy them from us. Yeah. So they orchestrate this leader coming in who, he's not doing well. He's in his last days. Even at one point, he's like... He's just a senile he really, old like, lieutenant. He doesn't know where he is. Like, yeah. He just wants soup. Um. And so there's this kind of like, I can't think of the actor's name, but I think his name in the movie is like, is it like Trotter or Tripper? Or Hopper? Hopper. Charlie Sheen's character? No, the guy who's orchestrating the, who's working with the bad guys. Yeah, I can't remember his name. Anyway, there's a guy who's working with the bad guys to basically bring in Hopper, who's Charlie Sheen, who's a loose cannon. But so it's they've not, got him. But it's made it like he thinks that, their weapons are good that that is what is best for his country and his yes. men well he thinks it's best for his country and he's also been insured by them that no one's going to actually get hurt that what he's been told is we're going to blow this mission by putting someone inept in charge and by bringing in charlie sheen who's a hot what did i call him Loose cannon. Yeah. And so if you have those two things in combo with also like Carrie Elways who thinks he can't make a mistake, and then you've got John Cryer who's wall-eyed and can't see shit. You've got this kid dead meat who's just gonna die. And so <laughs> you've got this like ragtag team of Christy Swanson, I love is yeah, in this. Yeah. She I love it. They just treat her like she's a dude and it's so great. Yeah, they don't acknowledge that she's a woman. I and love when, it. And what the guys so much. Um, but so like they they've gotten this like kind of ragtag group of kids together, kids, pilots. Their children. Their children, they put all these people together who all should be failures. Then just the story plays out of them trying to like come together and be like a good squad whilst these guys are trying to sabotage them. Yeah, and of course it's a farce, so it's a bunch of crazy ass fucking jokes and shit. And there's a gorgeous French woman. Yes, and apparently she's an Italian actress, but she's supposed to be French in the movie. I think she's as French. I yeah, understand she's French. it. I think she's French in the movie. I think she's supposed to be. The caption said speaking French at yeah. some point, yeah. but she's an Italian actress. Well, she's gorgeous. Yeah, totally. She was in a bunch of stuff back then. Well, yeah, I don't. I honestly don't remember anything. Oh, else. really? Yeah, it's just a big spoof ass shit. And apparently Hopper is played by Charlie Sheen. He's like the Tom Cruise character. Yeah. His dad or people's dads died and they A bunch of dads died. They did they didn't say did they ever say why he left? Because they find him on an on a reservation and there's a bunch of stereotypical Native American jokes. Yes. Yes. So basically the story was right that his dad was blamed for killing someone. And so when he went into the Air Force to follow in his dad's footsteps, everyone he's all his dad was apparently a loose cannon, although we find out later that he was actually a good guy. He was being compared to his father, which was triggering for him, and he just was like, I can't handle it. He basically was like, I personally get too worked up, even though I'm the greatest pilot there ever was. So I've now gone to this like reservation to live peacefully. But they bring him back for this mission. And how do how do we talk about this movie? I don't want to just go beat by beat through the movie because it's mostly it's just jokes mm -hmm. outside of the outline of the plot you gave. I think you just talk about things that you thought were funny or bits that you remember or the way that they handled it. Because you're right, there's no more story to it. There's also the whole bit about um they make fun of different parts of Top Gun in different places. Like, I actually love that there is a song that Charlie Sheen sings to the woman, but not until the end, and it's alone in the middle of the 
in front of her house, like in the middle mm-hmm. of the yard. Like he's just singing to her. There's not like a big, mm-hmm. but she sings a song in the nightclub and he plays the piano. I don't know. It's all over the place. I don't want to tell any jokes. One of my, well, I do want to tell one joke. Okay. That was uh, very funny. When dead meat finally is dead. Yeah. And they're at his funeral and they're doing the 21 gun salute. Yes. And the Lieutenant <laughs> Lloyd Bridges has a flashback. He thinks they're being attacked. So he pulls out his gun and just starts shooting, shooting at people and throwing grenades at the officers doing the 21 gun salute. I love a good funeral. <laughs> <laughs> so he knew it was a funeral. He just, that just kind of makes him seem he more He didn't psycho. know it was a funeral because he said that. Well, he thought he was being attacked at the funeral. One of the scenes that I, that was the most influential on me as a child i guess or that i remember the most is the the sex scene yeah with well, the frying the eggs on the belly i remembered the egg i forgot about I the bacon the other stuff i forgot about the bacon and the hash browns this is the best this was the best thing so when they're actually gonna have sex and the thing that was great about this we talked about it in the middle of the movie you know we've watched all these other movies and there's leslie nielsen and priscilla presley and then you've got um emilio estevez and kathy ireland but these two people they actually, actually had, chemistry, had chemistry. Like, I believe sure. that they wanted to fuck each other. And that was what made it so great. And, like, she she's laying down and he, like, you know, her shirt's up off so her stomach's there. And he cracks an egg in her stomach. He, at one point, puts an olive in her belly button and, like, shoots it into her mouth. Like, he's making hash browns and bacon. And that's, like, their foreplay. Mm. And then there is this bit at the very end where she has the bacon and he pulls out steaks. That's funny. It's a funny callback to and her. Yeah. Someone's dad died. Like in the beginning, that's like showing their some dads of the characters we get later. And someone crashes as Jet and he has antlers on. Oh, yes. Because yes, he I crashes know. into the woods. Yeah. And so and then he re- and it's like a Bugs Bunny joke where he realizes it's like deer hunting season. So they go into the uh, the, sign said deer hunting starts today. Yeah, or something. <laughs> so, so the new recruits, even though Carrie Elways and Hopper have been around, they're like in boot camp, even though they've been around. It kind of doesn't make a lot of sense if you think too much about it. Mm. But they start to talk about their fathers mm-hmm. and how they're all connected, and it comes to realize that one of the in the airplane it was Carrie Elways' dad and. Hopper's dad. The plane goes down. Hopper's dad gets out. Carrie Elway's dad crashes and ends up with all the antlers on his head. And then you find out that with the antlers on his head, he gets shot. The man who shot him. He finds out that his dad was the one that shot his dad when he yeah. thought he was a deer. Yeah. And they had a picture of his dad's head mounted. That's and right. then it reveals like that they ate his dad because they thought he was a deer. And he says, you know, I only had. I didn't have seconds. I didn't have seconds. Yeah. Just so you know. Oh, my God. And then later, he's, like, mad at Hopper, and Hopper's like, he ate your dad. Like, <laughs> we're missing this whole picture. But, but he seemed to completely understand, like, well, you know, we all make mistakes. Yeah. On that one issue. He was he was a kid. John Cryer was a kid. But, yeah, of course, the bad guys get their comeuppance, and the good guys win, and everyone's kind of friends, just kind of like how it is, and... Of course, there was, like, the bad guys were terrible. At least the enemy jets, uh, when they had the foreign, there was unnamed Middle Eastern country, and they only, like, just talked to each other using, like, Mediterranean food words. They had names across their helmets that were, like, hummus and couscous and baba ganoush, and it's very offensive. As funny as these movies are, woke or new are, I was more offended than you are, woke or new are. As much as these uh, movies have, like, genuine laughs, every movie has something that is just, like, non-funny. Looking back, I totally forgot about those jokes. It meant, it meant that they were just throwaway jokes, and they just weren't that funny to begin with. Oh, totally. And also, the way he speaks with the Native American man, of like, course. they're not saying... They're not speaking a Native American language. They're no, also no. saying, like, made-up words. Or right, not made-up right. words, but words that are... Yeah. I was more They're making fun. You didn't like that. I like. I didn't like it more. I'm woke than you are. <laughs> you were like, you were laughing at that scene, and I was like, I'm woke than you are. I'm not laughing at these scenes. Mm-hmm. Woke than you are. Okay. 
So let's uh, give back to indigenous people. Okay? Okay. Woke New York. We're going to give them our house. We'll just give them our house. There was a part that I really loved at the end when the bad guys have tried to destroy everything, but Hopper saves the day. And Lloyd Bridges is like beating up the bad guy. You risk the lives of some damn fine pilots. Well, that's my job. Yeah. I just love him. I know I got a little crazy off on a few tangents and talking too much probably, but I really love this one. Okay. <laughs> okay. You go off on tangents too. I just get so excited when I really love something and I really love this one. So we hunt movies. Yes. And uh, I, I will Angela give this a five? I don't know. No. Well, well, we discovered that with the things that she was offended by, but I was more offended by it. Welker, New York. But it still is. Maybe we'll score pretty good. How many times are you going to hump this movie? We'll combine our humps for best out of ten. Some bits do not hold up great. But overall, I had the most fun watching this movie of all of the like slapstick comedies that we have revisited in this humor month of april so i'm awkward laughter is what we call it awkward laughter i guess this is as good a title as any right 4.5 hot shots for me i'll give it a four so that's an eight and a point five movie (laughs) (laughs) the best one of these uh it's one of the better than the naked gun yeah to me. Maybe. The to jokes me. are a little longer there. Lloyd Bridges is fucking amazing. Amazing. In this movie. Amazing. Honestly. He brings it up to four. He does. He brings yep. it up to four. So that's an 8.5. <laughs> Hot Shots is an A-tier movie. Just under Bill Tippett's Mad God. And above Akira? And above Akira. You want to put it below? You can put it below Akira. <laughs> oh, yeah, because it, it's tied with Akira. Yeah, put it below Akira. Okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that puts it above what? Like Snow White and the Seven well, Dwarfs? <laughs> it puts it uh, a 0. 0.25 up above Bode's Afraid. Yeah. Oh, oh, I forgot to pull this up so people I can watch me type. I can't, like, justify that. Um... Who knows? You know, Bo's Afraid. <laughs> Bo's Afraid might be one of those movies that slow burns and we come back and be like, oh, this is actually like a nine. Totally, but... But for now, it's an 8.25. I mean, this movie had such small, brilliant moments. Like, just the opening sequence alone, when they're all taking off in their planes and there's like smoke and then it backs off and a guy's like making tea on the runway and yeah then it's someone else tons is like of little shit like behind that. a jet and he's like cooking a hot dog mm. but he's sitting at like a full picnic table that's decked out with all the picnic stuff like there's some funny fucking shit in this and if you're not watching you're gonna miss it because it's quick yeah and that's also why it's boom, great boom 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 and it's sexy and they actually had chemistry they did have chemistry more he so than some chemistry with elways which makes sense because it was rex well you know yeah they did have she maybe she's just good at being like that leading lady it's weird like what what else has she been in you know the... i'm not looking her up I can't tell you without looking her up. Okay. Well, the nothing. This is probably the only movie. This is part part do. I do think I might have been getting her confused with the girl that played the French girl in uh, a couple of those, like, say anything type. Better off dead. Mm. But it's not her, so. Mm. She was the woman in Rain Man. Oh, right. Um, oh, she played the mother in Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Oh, who, The really? mom who was, like, trying to marry off her daughter. So there you go, folks. Hot Shots is 0.25 better than Bo is Afraid. <laughs> Don't. Hot Shots is a better, according to us. I, well, I, as I stated in that episode, Bo is Afraid is very divisive. Yes. So I think it's going to be a movie where a lot certain people will talk about, some people will just really be into it, and other people will probably just think it's overrated. I think that we think it's very good. Yes. But apparently we think Hot Shots 
is a better movie. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Hot Shots was more fun, and there was never a moment where I was like, why isn't this over yet? Well, the best thing about these farcical (laughs) movies is that they're 80 to 90 minutes max. And it's like, ah. Perfection. But, uh, yeah, let's get out of here. Okay. Uh, Death to all traitors. Death to all traitors. (laughs) 